my name is William Bray and I'm from Emerald State High School and I'm really looking forward to being able to row down or paddle down the rivers and have a look at all the water treatment and stuff. Hi, my name's Ron Stall and I'm from Mars College Emerald. I'm in grade 10 and I live on a farm approximately 32 kilometres out of Emerald. Out of this trip I expect to learn how to take water qualities and learn more about what I can do to protect our reef. My name is Hannah Murphy, I'm from Morris College Emerald. This camp, I reckon it will be a fantastic experience for everyone, just going out camping and seeing what the water systems are like. I just hope I don't capsize. <laughs> By using the data that we have collected over this past week, we can now answer the question, how healthy, healthy is the Nagoa River and the Fairburn Dam ecosystem? We have canoed, walked and driven to various locations in the Nagoa catchment. These locations include, include Salvatore Rosa National Park, properties of Petrona, Raymond, Van Dyke, Cullimore and Airlie, as well as the Nagoa Inlet and Barilla Creek. We tested turbidity using a black and white Seki disc, which is submerged into the water until the pattern is no longer visible. The level of turbidity within the various areas tested in the catchment ranged between 20 centimetres up to 1 metre, with an average of 0.6 metres. This was surprising due to the large amount of macroinvertebrates found within the waters. The presence of the very sensitive mayfly nymph and water flea suggests that the Nogoa catchment above and in Lake Maroon is very healthy. However, apparent turbid water suggests a lower level of health. When the salinity is high, it can affect what grows as plants use nutrients to grow and salinity affects its ability to get nutrients. Some salinity is natural because of the soil type or where the water is situated. The reason why some of our test sites had high salinity levels is because many years ago, inland Queensland was part of an inland sea. This meant that there are deposits of salt mixed in with the lazar rock. Salinity can increase with unusual amounts of heavy rain and extensive tree clearing. This brings the salts closer to the surface and can drain into the Nagoa catchment. Rainfall into the waterways can either dilute the strength of the salinity or if the water coming in is a higher salinity then it can make the water stronger. From all our observations of increases and decreases, we believe that the Nagoa River and Lake Maribyrn has a moderate level of dissolved oxygen in the water. The Nagoa release has a high level of dissolved oxygen because of the constant flow of water. Apparently from the data that we have gathered from the Nagoa catchment is pretty damn healthy. Although there is erosion that causes that water that to be quite turbid. Together we have given it an 8 out of 10. I'm most surprised about the way the kids spoke about the data and how well they were in front of uh, a crowd of people that they didn't really know. I was most surprised about the actual information, how dirty the water can look and yet it can have those really sensitive species in it. Although the sensitive species in the dam were a bit under a lot of sediment, whereas down at the Nagoa release they were quite clean and much bigger. So I think it does impact those sensitive species. I thought the students did an excellent job with their presentation. Uh, saw the real life learning happening there for them. Uh, they've been out there, they've done it hands on, come back and talked about it and yeah. did an excellent job.